So uh, let's review some React stuff, how about? Um, I don't have anything set out and planned, so uh, I wanna hit whatever you uh, need or anything you're having trouble with or just want more clarification on. Um, so um, hit me up and if no one has anything, I'll just uh, start doing a thing and y'all can ask me questions as I go along. But uh, the floor is yours. Everyone feel good about everything so far? <laughs> yeah, Shippy, what's up? Uh, I guess the thing that is still kind of not crystal clear is if we're passing state down and then we're going to use an event handler to set that state, mm -hmm. um, sometimes you would want to use the event, sometimes you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, and it's that's still like a little unclear to me. Like I kind of get the flow of data of how to get it down and then pass it back up, but less of the when and why. Yeah, so um, I have I have some answers. Uh, can you give me a, a specific example of what you're talking about? If not, I can just start talking. Yep, so um, I'm gonna go back to one that uh, I was working on yesterday. Yeah. I think a couple of us were working on it that had like a delete button that we needed to add. Yeah. Um, and so like, when we're thinking about what to do and where to, you know, set state, the thing that we want to change is the original data array that's coming in. Mm -hmm. So we know that we want state to be at the top level, yeah. but like what we're grabbing from the component at the bottom level to like pass back up was a little unclear to me. Um, and I tried to grab the event at first and it wasn't working. And then I tried to grab like a different like element of that piece of data to send back up and it worked, but I guess I just, it, it was not a satisfying answer for me yeah. of why we used the text of that versus like the click event. Yeah, so, um, you know, you can think about that. <clears throat> uh, so you're sending a, a handler down as a, as a prop and that's kind of like the, the, the lifeline, the, the pager or whatever you want to call it down there. Um, but that's just a function, right? Uh, so, say you know you have uh, an array of things and you wrote a function that says uh delete you know at the index that you give this function index n um and then pass that one down that function is it's just a function right it's not special uh in any way that's specific to uh the component that you're passing it to so the thing that you would pass to that component is the same thing that you would call it with if you were using it up top or anywhere else, um, you know, not not in that component. Uh, so if it's taking in the index of an array to delete or uh, you know an ID or something, that's what you would pass it. And whether you pass an event or not depends on how you're managing that data inside that component. Um, it's likely that you have an ID or an index or something available uh, in there, and that's probably what you would want to pass up. Um, and that's probably not going to be attached to an event. Uh, but if you were doing something like uh, selecting something from a dropdown, for example, uh, you would want to pass that back up, which would be in the event, or you could pass the whole event up and grab that out of it. Does that kind of point you in the right direction? Yeah, I think so. That's good. Yeah, yeah. And just I think the the important thing is to remember that it's React isn't special. It's still just JavaScript. So if you write a function to change your state up top, um, you know, it's just a function. And you the way you pass it down and call it inside is just how you would like pass it to, you know, a high order function or as a callback to anything else or just calling it normally there. Um, awesome. What other stuff do we have questions about or would like to see? Is this going to be a short session? I would love to see.
see a little bit more of like state with callback syntax. Okay. Uh, can you t say a little bit more about that? Um, just like I've been getting stuck on all these labs with it. So mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe we can just like maybe go through a previous lab yeah. with it. Which one do you have in mind? Um, maybe. Maybe, I don't know actually, maybe just the React State one. Yeah, uh, let me see. Uh, or maybe the React State Lab. State Advans React State Lab, there we go. Um, that's the one with the Shopster to-do list thing, mm -hmm. or the shopping list, awesome. Um, cool, would you mind bringing it up on your screen and we'll sort of talk through where you're at and answer questions there? Yes. Awesome. Some 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 of the other uh, um, students <laughs> were concerned it was a uh, Modelo. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, just canned water. We accidentally bought it at Target, but it's delicious. Liquid Death. The marketing is fantastic. Check it out. <laughs> the marketing is like the only good thing about that water. They're, they have a great brand, but it's still just water. It is just water. Yes. There's nothing. I think they just scoop it right out of a mountain spring. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew Schultz advertises it a lot on his podcast, if you know who that is. Oh, yeah. 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 The sparkling version is good. Sorry. Okay. We're getting way off track. Sorry. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Is that okay with everybody else? Like, I don't know where everybody else is. Yeah, it's time. I feel That's like awesome. I just came here to see like some examples, uh, just have like walk through some stuff with Mark. I'm pretty much cool with anything. Yeah, I find that like that callback function thing is still a little like iffy for me too. So I'd love to see that again. Yeah. Okay. One second. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Okay. So here are the deliverables. And I guess just like, I really struggled with this one um, with so many things. So I'm just wondering if we can just kind of break each step down and kind of just go through it. Yeah. So th this is the one way we're doing the, uh, oh yeah. So we're doing the uh, dark and light mode. I don't know. Um, I think I pretty much got the dark and light mode, maybe yeah. like the filter one. Yeah, for sure. Um, have you, do you have any code written towards that one or should we just go for it? I don't know. Do I? <laughs> um, so let's see, where's the... Uh, so uh, we've got our... So let, let's take a look at what we have to start here. Um, yeah, awesome. So <clears throat> that uh, shopping list component is the one that's displaying all the things, right? On line uh, 20, oops, uh, yeah, that one. Um, so that's doing its job. And uh, you know, as far as displaying stuff goes, uh, it seems like it's doing what it needs. 
all we're worried about really is what we are passing in there, right? Um, cool. So uh, we have our drop down where our uh, select on 2025 there. Great. So we're going to be selecting from that to see uh, what we are displaying. Great. So uh, handle category change. Uh, you have set selected category, and that is a function that you're passing down, or then you are calling that when that gets changed and passing up the value. Awesome. Uh, so can we see what that function looks like up in app? Uh, cool. I think we don't have it yet, right? I guess not. All right. Uh, so let's just make a function um, called whatever we want here, right? Uh, and we'll pass it down as set select category. Make a function as. Um, sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah. So this is the this is the function that's going to. Uh, set our filter up top here, right? Um, okay. We can call it whatever we want. Um, uh, handle filter, select, set selected, filter, oh. do my stuff, whatever you want to call it here. More, more specific, the better. Um, and it's going to take something, uh, filter or category or whatever you want to call it here. So you can just say whatever. Yeah, because it's just a function we're writing. And it could take, you know, it could be dinosaur. Um, Great, and for now, let's just console log out what's being passed to it. Console log filter? Yeah, just so we can see that it's doing a thing. Uh, and now we need to pass that down as a prop to the shopping list component. So, would I just put filter in here? So, uh, or handle filter? <laughs> So if we look in the shopping list component again, okay, um, it's looking for uh, the, it's looking for a uh, handler function here, right? Because that's yeah. the one that's getting called when we do the uh, on select or on change. Yes. So we, we pull that thread and we see uh, our you know our filter is calling handle category change. And the category change is calling set selected category. Set selected category is being um, sent down as a prop. So we need to send it a function with the prop name set selected category. And uh, fortunately, we just wrote a function. So let's pass that one down. And the app? Uh, yeah. Yeah, wherever we're using shopping list. Okay, so right down here where the component is. Um, I'm just going to say set select category. Is that one? Yep, you got it. Uh, and we're going to set it to the function that we just wrote. Cool. So when you change the drop down, what do you expect to happen? Have the list of items. Uh, so I'll go into our console on the right hand side here. Okay. And uh, let's try that again. Select something else and see if it did it. Um, did we send it the right thing? We're getting an error. It says handle filters defined but never used. We can go back to the code. Um, do we need a reload or did we miss something else? It looks like it's being used. Go back to the page and reload it just, just for kicks. And then try to, yeah, I think that might've done it. Um, nope, okay. Uh, is set select category being passed down as a prop? 
Uh, let's take a look, double check. <coughs> so let's go into, so set selected category, set selected category, set selected category, that looks right, okay. And what is it called in shopping list? Set selected category, that looks right. Oh no, set selected category is, I'm sorry, I was looking at the use state instead of the, um, instead of the props. So we do want to add it as a prop here. And we can get rid of this state here because we want the state to be handled up top. So I pass, so in shopping list, yeah. in the props, I'm gonna pass through set selected category. Yeah, and we can get rid of that line five because we're not keeping state for that in this. So do I move this to the app? Um, yeah, app? yeah. So I'm gonna put this at the top of app, is that correct? Yeah. Cool. So does that I take away this use state up here? Yeah, since we're not using state down there. Okay. Um, and we could, like if we wanted to, we could keep a state down here and use the filter in here. I think that's messier. Um, and I can talk about why more uh, after we get it working. But for now, let's let's keep that up in the up in the app state. So let's go back and see if uh, it works now. Nope, what did we do? Uh, sex, sex, sex. Find in shopping list 12 and 14. Let's take a look where that is. Oh, selected category. Yeah, so we can get rid of uh, selected category and, oh yeah, actually you're doing the filtering down here. So let's bring that up, I guess. Let's bring that uh, 11 to 15 up to the app. All this right here? Yeah. And just put it in the app component? Yeah. For now. We'll see. We'll see if it fits in. Just any, does it matter where you put it? Uh, up top is fine. Yeah. Cool. Let's make sure it works or at least doesn't error out. Nope, still good. Uh, items to display is not defined. Yep, that's true. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix that one too. Um, so let's see. Items uh, should be being passed in. And um, where are we using? Yeah, so down on 24, we no longer have items to display. That's just going to be items. Um, yeah, let's see if that does it. Nine items is not defined. Well, let's go back and see what that is in the app. Uh, yeah, so let's comment that the nine to 14 out just for now. I have confidence that this will work this time. Perfect. And let's do our select. And I expect to see what we selected show up in the console. Perfect. OK, great. So we got that cleaned up. Um, so let's go back to the code and walk through one more time exactly what's happening. Um, so let's go back to the shopping list. So uh, on the shopping list, select our drop down. We are setting an on change handler which is handle category change. So when we change the value of that dropdown, it's going to throw an event, uh, and the event is going to be handled by this function here. Uh, this function here is calling set selected category with the value of that, and we just saw that it's sending the right value. And we are passing set selected category in as a prop here. Um, with items, and this is why I wanted that change. 
So items is also being passed in, and that is what's being displayed in the list. Um, I like it this way because it simplifies this component whose job is to just display items. Um, in a real app, I would probably break out the dropdown into a separate component, but we work with what we got here. Um, but just passing items down just simplifies it and says, um, I'm just a component that displays some stuff. I'm not going to worry about what it is. I don't care who's sending it or as long as it has a name and ID and a category, I'm good. I'm just going to display my stuff. So where we want to worry about passing it in the right stuff is up top. Um, but right now we're just pulling this thread. We know that <clears throat> our select calls uh, on change this function, which calls our set selected category, which we're passing in from app. So let's go take a look at app. Uh, and we can see we're passing in set selected category here. It's handle filter. And that is doing the job of console logging the filter, uh, which tells us that we uh, have it hooked up right and that it's passing the thing that we want. Fantastic. Um, questions about any of that part? Or better, can you talk me through that process just to solidify it? I guess I do have one question. Yeah. So if the use state is in the app mm -hmm. and I moved all the things that I had in the shopping list right up here to selected category, like this use state right here. Yeah. So that's accessible to all the other children components? Nope, yeah. just, just that component. It's, it's accessible if we send it a function that it can change that stuff, but without anything else, it's just trapped in that component there. Okay. I guess uh -oh. that's what's confusing me. Like, yeah. if I need it in the shopping list, if I need to use state in the shopping list, then does the use state just come from the set selected category that I'm using? Yeah, so we're going to use that to filter the list up in app. But right now, we're just making sure that the, the dropdown is sending the thing that we want. Okay. Yeah. Um, so can you, can you just talk me through the uh, sending the uh, category up through the filter? Just to make sure we got it down. Um, yes. Awesome. I'll give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> I get lost so easily. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 our, the place where we're starting to pull this thread out is mm -hmm. the on change, because that's the action. Right, that's the event handler, yep. right? So we have the on change, which is the almost like the add event listener, but in React. Exactly. Change. Yeah, so then you're passing through the function handle category change, mm -hmm. which is um, the drop down event. Yeah, so the, the event handler is passing in the event, and that's where we're getting that value from. Mm -hmm. Right, the event that target that value. Okay. And then you have to put that in as a prop mm -hmm. into the shopping list function. Yep. So that's just a function that we're sending in. Okay. Yeah. Um, and up in app is where we're sending it in. Mm -hmm. And then I guess this is just, you can just use it globally. Oh, so I think this is the confusion. Um, we, we're calling the set the state thing the same as we're calling this down here. Um, they have nothing to do with each other. So let's, let's comment this line out for a second. Okay. So this prop here is just what we're calling the function that we're passing in on the inside of the component. So that that could also, as long as that one and the one in shopping list match up, they could be, you know, whatever. So as long as that one and this one match up. 
Gotcha. Okay. Um, cool. And so it's it's calling that function from the prop. Mm -hmm. Calling the handle filter, and that function is logging in whatever you press in that drop down menu in the console log. Yeah. Um, and just to sort of underscore the point that this is just like this is literally just a really simple function that takes in an argument and console logs it out, right? It has nothing to do with the event handler or props or reactor. Like we could just call this right after it and say handle filter uh, basset hound and it would log that out. It's literally just a function that console logs out what we pass it right now. Um, we just happen to be passing it in as a prop to do the thing. Um, cool, so let's make this actually do the thing. Um, before we do that, any other questions from anyone about any of that? All right. Um, so cool, we need to now uh, set the filter um, as state up in the app here. Um, so let's, instead of selected category, set selected category, just for clarity, let's call it filter and set filter. So you want me to uncomment this? Yeah. Okay. And we'll call it instead of selected category, we'll call it filter. Yeah. And then set filter? Yeah. Um, so this again is it's just a string we're keeping track of. It starts off as all. Um, so now we want to set that um, through the handler. And uh, I think we can do that pretty easily, right? Yeah. <laughs> set filter. Um, and I'm not sure what to pass through here. Uh, so what is that function getting as an argument? It's getting the filter? Yeah, so that's getting the string from the dropdown, right? Okay. Uh, which we saw because we were console logging it out just to make sure. Sweet, so now it's gonna set the state to the new value. And since state changed, it's going to re-render the component. Cool. Uh, one last task to do, and that is to use that value to uh, filter uh, what we're passing in. And we can do that right there. So um, there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, do you have an idea of where you might want to start? No, I have no idea. <laughs> Cool. Uh, so let's talk about what we have to work with. Uh, item data is what? Um, is that what's in my data right here? Yeah. So um, how would you describe this? What's in this variable? Um, an array of the items. Yeah. And those are objects, right? Uh, so we have an array of objects. An array of objects. Yeah. Yeah, um, cool. So and that array of objects is being passed in. Uh, and so we want to pass in, instead of the full array, we want to pass it in a, a subset of that array, right? Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what method might we want to use to change an array into a subset of that array? Would I do like dot notation to grab certain thing? I'm sorry, I I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know. Uh, so item data here is an array. Um, there is a method on the array objects that lets you change or return a subset of that array based on some criteria. Uh, does anyone know what that might be? Uh, it's in the same neighborhood as map. Filter, yeah. Uh, so we can use a dot filter on that item data right here. 
So would I do it in this function, handle function right here, or would I do it? You can do it right down uh, where item data is down here. So you can say item data dot filter. Oh, just write in, okay. Yeah. Just like you would do like a dot map to display a bunch of stuff there. Um, uh, pass in an item? Uh, no, because uh, item data is the array that it's working on. So okay. item data already contains all the stuff. And we're saying, hey, item data, only give me some of your stuff. Uh, and I'll tell you how. Uh, and so the stuff that we wanted, so filter is a higher order function. It mm -hmm. takes a function and that function uh, tells us what is going to be sorted out of that array. Uh, if for each item in that array, if the function returns true, it's gonna include it. And if it returns false, it's not gonna put it in there. So if we had an array that was like two, three, four, five, and our filter function was return true for even numbers, it would return the array to four. So we want to write a function here that takes an item from the array and returns true if it matches our filter. Um, any idea how to start that? And if not, I can totally walk you through it. Is this a ternary statement? Um, not yet. <laughs> it, it might be, though. Um, so we want to, uh, here it's kind of convention to say E. Uh, you can also, since they're items, we know what they are. Uh, let's call it an item right there. Um, and you don't need parentheses around it if you don't want to, but it doesn't hurt. Um, and let's get rid of the curlies here because we're just going to be returning something right away. So we don't need the curlies because we have an implicit return. Uh, you want to get rid of the inner one there, not the outer one. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I think the outer one needs to get put back, maybe, or the outer, whatever was there. Mm, what are we missing? Still, still got a red Twizzler there. Um, got that. that. Okay. Um, so we want to return true <coughs> if the um, items category matches our filter. Um, so that's an easy condition to write. We can just say item that category triple equals filter. Um, cool. Yeah, and that's that. So uh, again, this is this is the function that we're passing into our filter method on this array. Mm -hmm. Filter is saying, hey, go through all the things in that array and run this function on each one. Uh, I'm going to return a new array. And depending on whether that function returns true or false, I'm going to include or exclude some of those items. And so what we're saying here is if for each, one, for each item in there, if that item's category is the same as our filter, cool. Um, I'm curious about, no, I think this is gonna work. Um, let's try and find out, let's try and find out. And if it breaks, we'll, we'll fix it. All right. So let's go ahead and pick a category and see. Oh, right now it's only doing that. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, that's produce, that's dairy, and that's dessert. Looks like that part works. But if we go back to the first one, yeah, nothing. Why? What is it trying to filter on there? The categories? Yeah, specifically um, for that first filter by category, what value is it passing back? Yeah, Chris has got it. Yeah, take a look at the shopping list component. Has a value of all, I guess. Yeah. So um, which items in the list have a category of all? None of them, right? Yeah, none of them. 
So uh, we, now we just need to add a special little thing uh, to our filter to make that work. And again, there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, so let's go back and look at our filter. So right now it's just saying, if the item category matches the filter, great. Um, we can either do a ternary. I prefer to do a logical operator um, and I'll talk you through that. So um, the thing that's being returned here is a logical expression, right? It's this equality that's gonna return true or false right here. Um, that's a, that's a uh, JavaScript expression that's gonna return true or false. So we need to expand this to return true or false for this. And uh, we want to return true if the category is all. So uh, uh, we can uh, say, you know, if this one is true or if this other one is true. So let's go ahead and put an or um, right here, I think. Just the, uh, the two, yeah, pipes, yeah. Uh, and so what's the other condition that we are okay with? <coughs> or it displays them all, mm -hmm. like all the- Yeah, so there. if the item category matches all, that's also what we want. Yeah, Charlie's got it. Yeah, I think it's all caps or just front cap. Cool. So now it's saying here, return uh, if if there's a filter that's all, return everything, uh, or return true. Uh, if the category matches the filter, also return true. Either one of those will make it return true. Uh, I think that will do us. So let's take a look at see if it works. Nope, still no good. Let me let me save it first. Uh -huh. no. I don't do it. What did we do wrong? Um, let's double check uh, shopping list and see if all is right. I'm pretty sure it is, but I never uh, trust my memory. Uh, so it's capital A L L. Okay, cool. Um, so let's go back to app and see if our logic is wrong. Um, so item category triple equals all. That looks right to me. Um, what could be wrong there? Uh, so where would you start debugging this? I have some suggestions. Uh, does it have to do with the initial value of state? Uh, maybe. Let's take a look what the initial value of state is uh, up top. Um, so that looks like matches. Um, and we can even look in the uh, component inspector in the browser if we want to, to make sure that that value is, in fact, all. Uh, so that would be an app, I think. Yep, so that state is all, great. Um, I feel like there's a problem with our logic then. Uh, let's take a look at the code. <coughs> um, so where I would start would be to simplify it just to make sure it works with all. So let's just for a second, let's just delete this part here and just make sure it works just with all. Yeah, get rid of that bar there too. Awesome. Um, cool. So now it's only going to return stuff if the category. Oh, I know what we're doing. Oh, I'm so dumb. That, that was a, that was a me thing. Yeah. Um, I realize what's going on now. Uh, do y'all see it? Uh, let's let's undo and put that stuff back. Um, undo is command Z, is that right? Command Z. 
Okay. Cool. Um, so right now we're checking to see if the item category is all, is the item category ever going to be all? It most certainly is not. Uh, what are we looking for that might be all? Charlie's got it. The filter. Yeah. So instead of item category here, we want to filter. All right, that feels a lot better. That looks like it works. Let's double check, make sure everything's all set. Make sure it goes back and we select select the category or the category. Awesome. Woo. <laughs> Troubleshooting. <laughs> I mean, that's 80% of your job. Most mm -hmm. of the time does. I mean, I've been doing this for a very long time and look at what I just did. <laughs> um, and that, that's why, so one of the things, uh, before we go back to answering questions here, uh, one of the things I always recommend is uh, get your uh, development bug fixing cycle as fast as possible. Um, so I always make sure to have uh, autosave on my uh, VS code so that when I unfocus, it automatically saves uh, using stuff like we're using here that automatically realizes the browser is great. Um, so I can just like make a change, switch over, see what I broke, go back, make another change, see that it's not fixed, go back, make another change. Okay, now it's fixed. Um, and that includes like learning all the keyboard shortcuts, uh, you know, learning like, oh, I can select the thing and then hit quotes and it puts quotes around the thing, uh, which is different for every IDE. Uh, but just like learning every shortcut you can just to like make that diagnosing and bug fixing faster uh, is going to improve your programming more than pretty much anything else, in my opinion. Um, yeah. So um, how did that feel? Is that super confusing still? It's better. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and part of the... So like half of the stuff that we're learning now is how React works, like how to pass functions down as props and how to send up events to change things and how to use effects to you know, do this or that. Um, and the other half is just like getting familiar with the parts of JavaScript that we're gonna be using a lot, um, like map, filter, reduce if you're brave, uh, reduce is one of my favorite things. Um, sorting you know all, all that sort of stuff uh learning all of your you know sort of more functional uh methods on arrays and stuff just learning the idioms that you're going to be seeing over and over again um you know, naming conventions like however you want to name like the stuff you're passing in versus the props that are being called versus whatever um find something through experimentation that works really good for you and like try and be consistent um I'm awful at that, so uh, <laughs> to try to do better than I do. Um, yeah, like the the bits and bobs of React are half of it. The other half are just like getting super familiar with the tools. Um, cool. What kind of questions do we have around all the stuff we just saw? Super good. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's just something you learn through practice. Um, and you don't have to do it that way. Um, you know, it's JavaScript, so there's a half dozen ways to do everything. Uh, you could, you know, before passing anything, set up another variable. It's like, you know, here's the items I'm displaying. If the, you make it like super verbose. If the filter is all, um, you know, that's just a full array. Otherwise go through and you can use filter, you can loop through it. There's a million ways to do it and then pass that variable in. Um, I like to use the logic way because it's encourages a more reacty functional kind of language um, that makes sense once you get used to it. Um, but you gotta get used to it first. It's not intuitive by any stretch. Um, but yeah, that's the, one of the things that is like not 
part of React, but part of how you use React. Um, and people make less noise about it these days, but having components that just display stuff, like our list there, um, if it didn't have the dropdown, um, is great because then you can, those are components you can use in more than one place. Those are components that are very easy to debug because we know we're passing it in this list and it's displaying this list this way. We are, you know, putting up a, uh, a button and the button has this label on it and it uses this function. Um, and it's really tempting because it's kind of a pain in the ass to like put state up there and pass the thing down and change it and blah, 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 blah. Um, but keeping that separation is really going to do you good in the long run. Uh, so m making components that just do that thing and nothing else, uh, even if you have to do some more wiring, super pays off. Um, and that's why I like the like filtering into a component like that. Uh, yeah, or like if you're using like a sort filter, throwing a sort on there. Uh, yeah, what else? Um, I think with what we were just doing a second ago, it's been confusing, but a good lesson in like variables and passing them through in different places, because in, you know, lecture, we might at one second be taking that filter that we did inside of the app mm -hmm. and we're passing down and we're actually like extrapolating that and putting it above the component yeah. and setting a variable equal to that. So then we're calling filter on that but we're actually just sending that filtered array as a variable down to the component. And then we're kind of doing that interchangeably, um, which I mean, it is, that's the whole point. Um, but it's been confusing to see where it's like, okay, that's like another step to follow this variable. Then we're, that variable is the filtered array mm -hmm. and that's what's getting passed down, even though that's the exact same thing as just taking the array and filtering it right then and there, and then having the return value of the array go down to the components. So yeah. that was that was super helpful right now, Lauren, for me. Um, yeah, and, and that goes to the thing I was just saying, because like, you could, there's no reason you, for this particular, you know, tiny application, there's no reason that you can't put that in that list. Um, but, you know, what if we're like, cool, now we also want it to sort by price or whatever. Uh, and we wanted to, you know, have a, a, a date that it needs to be ordered by. We could have all those filters up there, filter the thing that's being sent into filter and sort and whatever the thing is being sent in there and the list component never changes we're just changing what we're passing into it um and again you could jam all that in there but then like oh i want i want to use that somewhere else to display something else and it's yeah it just gets a big mess so my my advice is always like do it as simple as possible that makes it work and then when you need to change it change it um as you do it a lot, you sort of like see things like, oh, I know in five minutes, I'm going to need to change that. So I'm just going to do it now. Um, and there's a, you know, there's a, a level of like how much planning ahead is too much planning ahead. Uh, and my, my bar is very low, like a little bit of planning ahead is okay. Um, but in general, do it simple first and then refactor it later. Um, sorry, we we're gonna say something after that. Yeah, okay. No, no, no. That's 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 awesome. I don't want to use up everybody's time. And then the other thing is why we're here. Um, how we're passing the props down. Um, that can go as far down as as we want it to, as long as it's just being that callback function to the event handler, whatever. Like, is it once it's called back, it's gonna pass that event that on click or whatever that could go, you know, hundreds of components down potentially yeah. if you just kept passing it in through uh, the parameters of yeah. each component. Okay. Once, once you pass it more than a le couple levels down, it's time to think about reorganizing things. But yeah, you could pass it down a thousand ways. It's just like, here, here's a burner phone. Call me when you need me to change this list. And that you can pass that phone to anyone. And then eventually someone's going to call it and be like, cool, update the list. Got it. It's just a function. And then my last question is in the labs, they have like uh, the logic breakdown. Um, and I've, I think I've seen that like in VS code and comments. Do you know how to make the little lines come down like out of app into component and then down and then 
Is that like a oh, drawing like anyway? the art stuff? Yeah. Can we do like a logic tree inside of VS Codes? Definitely can. Um, Instead of MS Paint, as much as I love your drawing, Shippy. <laughs> <laughs> uh the one i use a lot is called ascii flow uh i'll post it here where is it is ascii flow and you can draw super complicated drawings with it um it's really really nice and easy to use and just copy paste it into your stuff um yeah thank yeah. you so much or you can do it by hand it's you know it's up to you how artisan you want to be about it um something else about the oh yeah and i think with the like yeah you can pass stuff down as much as you want and whatever combination uh and that goes back to the naming thing because even in this tiny example i think we had some confusion about like oh which one is the set category and which one's filter and they're like be be real strict with yourself about naming stuff uh yourself half an hour later will thank you yeah Especially when it's like filter, 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 filter. Uh, there's a lab, there's a sushi saga lab, and like sushi is plural and singular and happens in a bunch of places. I'm just like, every time I'm just like, oh God, what do we call this? Uh, okay, sushi is great. Um, sometimes being understandable is better than using correct English. That's why programming is like it is. Um, awesome. What other questions do we have? It is a chainsaw, yeah. It's a, uh, uh, it's made of um, like uh, foam, rubber, and cardboard and duct tape, mostly. I, I hadn't planned a Halloween costume one year, and then like the night before, I was like, "I'm going to be Ash," uh, and then I made myself a chainsaw. I have pictures. I can send you pictures. It's great. Um, I think I said. I think uh, Chris asked before. I sent him pictures. I think you'll have them. Um, yeah, <laughs> lots of fun around here. Got a whole entire closet with just craft stuff or stuff like that. It's like the Adam Savage garage, only smaller. Uh, yeah, it when it gets hot. It's so hard to do this when it's hot. Um, in Austin, yeah, literally. Uh, I don't know how hot is it right now? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it is very, very, very hot. Over 100. Don't like it. Um, cool. Any last questions? I can philosophize a little bit more, but I'm happy to answer anything else. Um, yeah, the one thing I did want to talk about state just briefly. Um, the way we're using state now is not the way for the way we're using state for data right now is not the way you'll see it in a real applications. Um, state in React is intended to contain state about that component. So like, are we in dark mode or not? Uh, what's the value of this dropdown? Is this modal displayed or not? Um, what's the what's the label on this? Um, that's information about the component. Whereas right now we have to stuff our data, our to-do list or our whatever in the app, usually a top level. <coughs> um, and it can get a bit gross sometimes. Uh, next week, later, uh, we're gonna talk about state management uh with redux or recoil or mobx and basically that's a way to keep your state uh in a management object that's accessible throughout your application so you don't have to pass your data up and down everywhere um so as you kind of wire your components together and pass callbacks and everything up and down um it feels like a pain it is a pain um it won't be a pain forever <laughs> just for for now it's uh it's practice um and for small applications you definitely will be doing it but anytime you get like three components deep then it's time to start using recoil or redux or something like that um 
yeah, and I'm happy to talk about that at length. Uh, I don't think that is technically in the curriculum. I'm pretty sure there's not a lecture on it. So I'm super happy to get you all on board with all that stuff. It's, it'll be super useful, incredibly useful for your projects. Um, but going forward, uh, that's just how it's done. Um, awesome. I think that's, that's a good hour almost. Uh, any, any last stuff we want to talk about before we break? Cool. Um, as always, build and burn is the best way. Just get practice doing stuff over and over again. Um, I will definitely be doing a lot of review next week. So uh, do as much as you can. Come with questions and we'll, uh, we'll talk about it more. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording. Bye, everybody.